Hi, I'm Jason, and this is the Pattern to Print channel. And today we're covering a step three in uh, this four-step process of uh, going from, you know, a pen and paper type uh, drawing and converting it into a 3D print. So today we're going to be, in this episode, we're going to be covering um, Inkscape. Now Inkscape is a vector-based program, and what that means is all the lines and curves are described sort of mathematically, and what that means is that you can infinitely zoom in and you don't lose any resolution, unlike the raster pixelated images where when you zoom in you kind of lose that resolution. And Inkscape is sort of the open source, uh, not the open source version, but sort of the uh, the twin of like uh, Adobe Illustrator, which is also a, a vector-based program. So um, the main purpose that we're going to be using Inkscape for is to sort of fill in that area in the pattern that we want to extrude and to 3D print. Um, so why don't we get to the computer and then we'll uh, get on to the next step. Okay, now we are in Inkscape. And so now we need to import the, uh, the image that we that we uh, cleaned up in GIMP. So we just need to go to uh, File, Import, and uh, select the image, and it imports it in. And so we have a few decisions when we import an image. Uh, the first one is either embed or link, and I always do embed because that kind of makes a copy into the software, and then you don't have to worry about sort of making changes to the original, and it just sort of runs a little faster when it's in, in there. Um, image DPI, I don't ever see really need to uh, change from the, the DPI from the file. And then the image rendering mode. Uh, sometimes uh, this matters, but with these black and white scans, it really doesn't matter so much uh, what you choose. So uh, leaving the default or choosing another one is going to be fine. So I hit OK. And when you do that, it brings the uh, brings the image in, and it tends to sort of set it somewhere randomly on the screen, or maybe where your cursor was last. So I tend to drag it over to uh, the center of the the area. And here we see that we're pretty zoomed out; we're only at 35%. So um, you can click the up button and kind of oops, that went way too far, and uh, kind of zoom in closer to the to the image. Um, so it kind of fills up the screen a bit. Um, so when we, so what we're, the part of, of Inkscape that we're going to use is we want to fill in the area that we're going to extrude to print. And so we use the fill for that. So we select the fill. And um, for the fill, the you don't want a stroke. So when you tend to do a fill thing, what it does is it does an outline, and then it does sort of what's in the middle. And here we already have our outline. And so we don't want another outline. So we want so we set the stroke paint to uh, no paint. And then for the fill, um, it really doesn't matter too much what color you choose as long as it's not black or white. And uh, so I tend to go with a gray um, just so you get some contrast um, to it. So we have several selections with the uh, with the fill tool. I always do fill by visible colors. There's all sorts of other choices, but we're kind of looking at, hey, we want to fill in the white area compared to the black, so visible works. Threshold is sort of a differentiator of, oh, how close to the color border you know, do you want? And with, when we have just black and white, uh, what that tends to, if you have the threshold set low, it tends to have a gap between uh, what you fill and the outline. So I try to get the threshold pretty high, but if you set it too high, sometimes it just doesn't want to work. It says the area isn't bound. Uh, that tends to happen more often when you don't have super thick lines, which which, which can happen. Um, the grow shrink by, what that does is say you fill in an area, and so let's, let's just uh, fill in this area here. And you need to notice it pretty much fills in the whole area, not much you know gap-wise. So let's do an undo. Um, and let's say grow by, and let's, oh, that's going to be huge. Um, let's hit a grow by two. So when you do the fill, notice that it does fills in the white area, but then it goes beyond uh, quite a bit. Now you can also um, do this as a negative, um, which can sometimes come in handy. And so it does the fill, but 
you know, does less, uh, less than by the amount you choose. Um, I usually want to fill in the exact amount, um, but just wanted to show you the, some of the, the possibilities. Now, one of the interesting things about the fill in Inkscape is that it's very dependent on the screen resolution or what's on the screen. So let's uh, undo this and let's zoom in. Um, let's zoom out uh, really far. And so we kind of have a tiny thing. And then let's end the threshold. This high isn't going to work. Oh, this is kind of a good example of what's going to happen. Um, so then we, when we zoom back in, notice that there's kind of these huge gaps between um, where the fill is and the outline that didn't happen when we had it kind of at 100%. So hit the undo and then fill it. At this point, notice the gaps are much smaller. But the problem is, is you do have a limit on how far you zoom in. So let's zoom in so it's going to be off the monitor, uh, part of the what we're filling. So let's do the fill. And here, if we go up, oh, it filled all the way there. Notice that it cut off. So this is sort of the bottom of what the monitor could see. Um, so when you've got the, when you're this close, it means you've uh, gotten too close and you need to, to back out a bit. So I'm going to back out. Let me recenter it and get it a little better. OK. All right, now I'm going to bump up the threshold again to where it was before. OK, so let's uh, fill all three of these in. Now at this point, these are three separate paths. So if I select the select tool and I select on one, it's just this path and not the other two. And when we uh, go on to the next step, we have to have these merged into one path. We, um, they can't be separate. So one way that's straightforward is just holding down the shift key and selecting all three and then doing a path union. And there you have all three. Now this works with simple ones, but if you have like a lot of paths and they're sort of like, uh, um, what can sometimes happen is one path is on top of another and it's really kind of hard to select them. Or if you have like 50 paths, it would just take a really long time to select them. So why don't we undo the union? Um, and so now that they're, uh, they're separate again. So what we can do is we can select one of the fills and go over and go to edit and select same, and then we do fill color. And that'll do the same thing. It'll select all of the paths that are the same color. And then we do the union, and uh, it puts them all together. So that's a really simple way to select all the, all the paths that you've created. Now for the next step is something that's gonna take some prep work on your part uh, before you can do it. So we're gonna be using an extension called uh, paths to open SCAD. And so to do that, what you have to go is you have to go to, uh, you have to go to Thingiverse and there's a thing called Inkscape to open SCAD converter. And Dan Newman, uh, who has done all sorts of wonderful things in the 3D printing community, including uh, the, one of the authors for the Sailfish firmware for uh, the older MakerBot uh, printers, came up with this converter to take um, something from Inkscape and convert it into something in OpenSCAD that we can then extrude. And so he, he, he stopped at version 6. And this is a good version, but someone extended it just a little further into uh, version 7. Now for what a really simple uh, thing that we're doing, version 6, version 7 doesn't really matter, but sometimes when you're doing really advanced stuff, some of the stuff that I, I do outside of this, um, the version center 7 has uh, it sets up the OpenSCAD file in a way that's kind of easier to work with. So I'd recommend using the version 7, but then using the instructions that are listed in version 6, because the instructions are pretty much the same. And uh, and it's a pretty well laid out, but it, it's different depending on whether you're on a Mac or Windows, and so I'm not going to go into actually how to install this, uh, this extension. Um, so just follow the instructions there. So once you've got the extension installed into Inkscape. 
we can then uh, use the uh, extensions generate from path. It'll be in this uh, paths to open SCAD. And it brings up this dialog uh, that has uh, a few options. First is the output file. And this is where you're going to output the, um, this is where it's going to go on your you know, hard drive. Um, so we have the, um, I have it in this location and, um, and I have a, the name for it. Um, there isn't any like browse to location, so you have to put in, you have to know what the full, uh, full path is and, and type it in. Um, it's kind of basic in that way. Um, the height is how much you want the paths extruded, how thick. Now, this is something you can change in the in OpenSCAD very simply, so don't worry about, oh, I want to change my mind. It's not a problem. So then we have the uh, smoothing, and that is basically like, say you have a curve. And the smoothing is how many lines do you want drawn uh, for each, um, for the curve. So if you have more smoothing, if you have a smaller number, that means you're going to have basically more lines for the curve and it's going to look smoother. So there's a trade-off between too much detail and having too huge of a file or not enough detail and it not looking so good. Um, I have found that the, um, that the default smoothing um, works fine. And then the line width is this is something that's in the in the version seven. I don't think it's in the version six. It's for certain special cases, and I've never really needed to use it, so you can just leave the default. And when you hit apply, it will write to um, write to the file location you have. Now I do have to warn you, it will not tell you if you're overwriting a previous file. So make sure if you, you know, to make sure, hey, I want a different file to make it a different name or it's going to uh, overwrite the previous file, and, um, and that may be a problem for you. So once you do it, you can close it, and that is uh, the ending for uh, what we need to do in Inkscape. So that completes this episode. Um, so our next step, our fourth and final step, is to take this, um, this what output of the extension and opening it in OpenSCAD and then converting that into an STL file. So if you have any questions on what we covered in this episode, please feel to feel free to add them into the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, if you want to know when the next episode will come out, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And that's it for this time. So uh, thanks for stopping by and have fun printing.